just want to make sure we had a lot of questions from last week about why Bambi was standing in the creek, or the creek wherever you're from in the world, and uh, it's a creek around her. And uh, so we just want to make sure that there was no one harm, no animal harm for you, Peter. Hope we love you in Jesus' name. Okay, all right. Yeah. Hey, you feel that power in here this morning? Yeah. It may be a new experience for you. Amen. That's all right. That's all right. Give the Lord praise in the house. Thank you so much for the mud bogging that you did out here. Um, I, I'm so sorry that, uh, I'm not sorry that God has grown us this fast, just, you know, I mean, but, but thank you for putting up with walking through here, and thank you for putting up with sitting in the fold-out chairs and stuff like that. I got a lot of, a lot of friends here this morning. All of you are, are my friends and family. I just appreciate you so very much and what God is doing in and through your lives. I'm, I'm glad that you're here to worship with us this morning. If you have your Bible or your smartphone or whatever you carry with you, if you'll open yours in the Old Testament to the book of Daniel, chapter 3, they'll be on the screen this morning. They'll be on the screen this morning. We're going to read verses 14 through 30. This morning, the subject at hand is firewalkers, firewalkers. And so I want to talk to you a little bit about becoming a firewalker. Last week was a firefight. This is our series, Ignite, and I want you to get on fire for God. I want you to understand that we don't do church as normal. I'm not trying to be cliche or dramatic or silly. What I want you to do is be so sold out for the Lord, so on fire, that when you walk by someone or you enter a room, they want to know what's different about you. Do you remember that season in people's life? Maybe you're experiencing that now, that, that you're so full of joy, you're so full of the power of God, that you're overflowing, and people want to know what's different about you. That's the fire of God. And in the Old Testament, throughout the Bible, but in the Old Testament, there's three different typologies of fire that is representation of the Holy Spirit of God. And, and we want to look through those three, if not more. But one of them is the very, the very power of God, where we talked about last week, Elijah called down fire on Mount Carmel, wiped out all the prophets. You can have that same power. You've got to understand that you're in a fire fight. In order to fight that fire, you have to have the fire of God in and through your life. And another place is the very presence of God, and uh, that's where Moses goes before the bush. This is one of the experiences, and the, and the bush is on fire but doesn't burn up, the very presence of God. And then the protection of God. Uh, he said he led them by a pillar of fire at night, and so he's always protecting us. We're going to see in a story this morning, a very true story of, of three Hebrew children or young adults, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, how God protected them in the midst of fire and how they became fire walkers. And, and all that equates to this. You listening to me say Amen. My group with the signs are not here this morning. They're out of town, but uh, that's okay. They, they got made signs for me. Amen. And, 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 and this, this morning, I wanted to encourage you, your walk of faith, your walk of faith. All that we're talking about with the fire of God and this that we become firewalkers is that we become people that walk by faith. And listen to me. I'm not talking about just saying it. You go, all right? Because, see, I've been to seminary. I've, I, I've been pastoring for a minute. I, I, I understand that we can become a cliche bunch. We can become a bunch that have memorized scripture and that we can quote them at any time, at any given moment. I'm talking about actually living them out. 
I'm talking about putting them into practical application in our life, that even in the midst of the fire, even in the midst of compromise, that we will step out by faith, even if it may seem ridiculous in the world's eye, that we will walk by faith, even when it seems like everything's against us. Y'all ever been there? I'm going to step out by faith. I'm going to be so charged and so full of the Holy Ghost of God, I'm going to be on fire for Him, that I'm going to be a fire walker, all right? And so let me read the text to you. I'm going to jump right in. The, 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 the preface to this, the, the, the verses I did not read, is Nebuchadnezzar and his knothead self had built this golden image, and he has declared that everybody, when they hear the sound, they're to fall down and worship this golden image, okay? And there's this group in there, just like we have in the church today, and I'll leave that subject alone, okay, unless the Holy Spirit takes me there. We have this group, this same group, they were satraps, and, and what they did is that they went back, they're tattletales. Y'all, y'all know what a tattletale is? Y'all not tattletales. I know you're not a tattletale. But, uh, but uh, they, you, know, you should say stranger danger, by the way, but I'm just saying. These tattletales, they went back to King Nebuchadnezzar and said, hey, there's these three guys over here, and they are not doing what you have decreed and declared. They, they, they're not doing it, so they tattletale. So Nebuchadnezzar is going to go to them. Let's pick up in verse 14 and let's read the scripture together. And Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the image of gold I have set up? Now when you hear the sounds of horn, flute, that instrument, that instrument, and the harp, the pipe, and all the kind of music, stay with me. If you are ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good. But if you do not, here is. This is where we live. Every day we live with this choice in our lives. Multiple times throughout the day we live with this very choice. Whether we can be fire walkers, men and women of faith, or we can be men and women of compromise. Now I want you to understand, he says, if you don't do this, but if you do not worship, verse 15 You will be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace. Then what God will be able to rescue from my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, I love this, right? It's good stuff right here, okay? All right, it's just just good stuff. I love how they speak back. King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it. He will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But, I love this, I love this. But, even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and his attitude toward them changed. He was was going to take it easy on them. And so they've ticked him off now. He ordered the furnace heated seven times hotter than usual. You you, you know what the number seven is, right? It's the number for perfection or completion, all right? And so Nebuchadnezzar, even that the enemy, didn't know that he was just absolutely walking out God's plan seven times. He's going to make it perfect. He's fixing to show his perfect will to all of these people. And so, so Nebuchadnezzar heats it seven times hotter than usual. And commanded some of the strongest soldiers in his army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Wonder why he had to get some of the strongest, being these were young guys. And throw them into the blazing furnace. So these men, wearing their robes, their trousers, a turban, and other clothes, were bound and thrown into the blazing furnace. The king commanded, verse 22, the king commands was so urgent and the furnace so hot that the flames of the fire killed the soldiers who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Looks like they would have known something right there, don't you think? I mean, you know, duh. But I'm just saying, it's, it, it's good. God give us this in its entirety. And these three men, firmly tied, fell in the blazing furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet in amazement and asked his advisors, still trying to turn to these knotheads, weren't there three men that we tied up and threw into the fire? They replied, certainly, your majesty. He said, look, I love this. In the Hebrew language, and and, and it's translated, I'm reading from the NIV, there is great expression in this language. I mean, I'd love to just been there to see the look on his face and then also to hear how loud that he gets and he proclaims this. Look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed. And the fourth looks like what, church? Son of the gods. Nebuchadnezzar then approached the opening of the blazing furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants, now watch this declaration, servants of the Most High God, capital G, come out, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire and the satraps 
All of those knotheads crowded around them. They still do that. They saw that the fire had not harmed their bodies, nor was a hair on their heads singed. Their robes were not scorched. I love how detailed God is. He reminds us, and there was no smell of fire on them. You can't even get close to a fire, a tiny fire, and not smell like smoke. He, he said didn't even smell like the fire. Then Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, whom was sent, who has sent his angel and rescued his servant. They trusted in him and defied the king's command and were willing to give up their lives rather than serve or worship any god except their own. I, to God, pray that you're willing to give up everything. To not compromise, to not sell out, but to press in and serve the one and only most high God. I pray every day that you walk, that this is the declaration of your life. I will not be a sellout. I will not surrender. I will absolutely press in. And so they did. Verse 29. Therefore, King Nebuchadnezzar says, I decree that the people of any nation or language who say anything against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be cut into pieces. Very graphic, isn't it? And their houses be turned into piles of rubble. For no other God can save in this way. And I want you to listen to verse 30. You, you think God's not a God of faith and, pro and promotion and, and blessing, listen to what he did. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the providence of Babylon. They went from being nobodies to somebodies. They went from being thrown in the fire to running the providence. You understand? God has greatness in you and through you. They is this, uh, I don't know that you have ever attempted this. I, I think I did in my B.C. days, but they are these folks known as firewalkers. It, uh, it, it says it's been around for centuries, uh, around 1200 it dates back to, and and they believed that they would spread out this, this, these coals, these ambers. Y'all following me, right? You're tracking with me? I preach fast, so you got to listen fast, baby. Buckle up, okay? I just go right into one thing. Still got to baptize in a little bit, all right? And so they, they'd spread out these coals. Most societies, most uh, tribes, most areas, this was kind of a rite of passage. It was, it was a rite of passage so that they would act on faith, that they could walk across those coals and their foot or their feet not be burned or hurt or anything like that. What is really cool with the 21st century is that we know with modern physics that we can explain that phenomenon, that they normally the ambers don't carry that much heat in them. And, and that it's not enough to burn your feet. Plus, we've watched some of those cats. They go pretty quick across there, don't they? And, uh, but they're known as fire walkers. Really, what I wanted to share with you is just like I did uh, last week about firefighting, how that they light what they call backfires to go ahead and keep the fire contained, to get everything out. The same way with fire walkers. It, it, it's that they expose and that they show their faith that, hey, I believe I can get. Now, they may do it in a worldly sense. You and I need to do it for the Most High God, that every day we walk, that we're fire walkers, that we understand that we live in the crucible of this world. We live with great pressure and strain every day, whether it's to be worldly, whether it's to, 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 to cheat on our taxes, being it's tax season. I, I, I've heard them say there's black and white and there's gray, and where there's gray, I'll play. That's of the devil, by the way. Uh, and so with the Bible says, let your yes be. Is that all right, y'all? Y'all all right? Yeah, here we go, baby. I'm going to mix, <laughs> mix your grits without butter. And uh, listen, listen. The Bible says, let your yes be yes and your no be no. There, there, there's no in-between. Most people, the, the reason they're miserable and they blame everything on everybody else, especially the church, is because they live with one foot in the church and one foot in the world. And I want you to understand that you're never, ever going to find joy and peace and fulfillment. You're never, ever going to be able to declare that I'm a fire walker. You're always going to struggle until you sell out for God. I love what these three kids did, these young adults. I love that they become firewalkers in that moment. I want to live my life in such a way that I walk by faith. Listen, when we said back before September of last year that we was going to launch a church, holy smoke. And even, even this week, every week, I seem like, okay, God, this is the week that the bottom falls out. This is the week where no one shows up. And you nuts just keep showing up. And you keep bringing somebody with you. And so I want to live my life because I want you to understand and I want to be transparent enough to know, to say to you that if I struggle with this, I know that you're struggling with this. And if I'm struggling with this, I know that you're struggling with it, and I know your kids are struggling with it. They're struggling with having one foot in the world and doing what the world says to do, and the popular opinion in high school and middle school, if we could get our kids to understand, and some of you adults that have never grown up past it, that there's more to it than being popular in high school. 
Some of the most popular guys that I knew in high school, they're the biggest dorks I know now. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's more than being cool. Is that okay? I hope that doesn't offend anybody. I love you in Jesus' name. All right? To get you to understand there's more to it, even in the face of great adversity. And let me tell you what I understand. I know that I've not walked your path, but the path God has chosen for me, especially over the last couple of years, I have had to walk through what you and I would consider hell. I would say that I was a firewalker, and I'm not bragging on myself, I'm bragging on God. I also want you, especially if you're a first-time visitor, don't you ever come to this place thinking that I'm going to preach down to you. One of the things that I do is I preach my heart, what it should be done all over the land. I preach what God is doing in my life, and he's challenging me to to stop being a person that's straddling the fence or holding back just to leave everything on the floor, make sure everything that we do every time we meet, that we are firewalkers, that in the midst of the greatest challenge of our life, and some of you are at that crux right now, you're, you're at that moment, you're at that curve in your walk where you've got to make tremendous decisions that, that not only affect you personally, but affect your entire family. And what you don't realize is that it affects generations to follow. You absolutely are being watched. And you're struggling between making the decision that seems right and seems comfortable and seems what you should do and instead of letting go and saying, even if he throws me in the fire, I'm going to do it God's way. That's where you and I need to live. Even if it looks ridiculous to the world, even if it looks plumb stupid to the world, I'm going to do it and I'm not going to make any apologies about it because God said to do it. And if they ask me, Kelly, if they say, well, Joel, why did you do that? Jesus told me to. That's going to be the answer. And I'm going to walk that out. And I I think there's at least three things this morning that we can glean from these firewalkers. I'm going to go through them as fast as I can. (laughs) And I want to challenge you to be firewalkers. Firewalkers, first of all, are people that confront the challenge. They confront the challenge. They confront the challenge. I see in Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego three guys that hit the problem head on. Now, I know because I've been doing this a while, and this is not my first rodeo, should I say. Is this a, that's a neary phrase, all right? all right? That's just how we roll. And this is not my first rodeo. I understand that I've watched staff and people that call themselves Christian pick up that super rug and sweep it under the rug. I've watched whole groups absolutely sidestep situations. I've watched people. I've watched families. I've counseled those families, done my best to help them that understand that the problem, you can't ignore it. Am I preaching? I'm preaching better than you. Amen. Amen. I mean, I'm already getting good. I'm just telling you, I'm going to lock out on Facebook later myself, all right? That's good stuff right there. We, we, we're so good at disguising it. We're so good at dolling it up and dressing it up. And what I want you to get to is a place that you and I, we walk in the fire, even in the midst of it, that by our faith, we hit it head on. We confront the challenges. God says, greater is he that is in you than in the world. And hey, listen, I'll cause you to tread on top of all your enemies. Matter of fact, if you will wait on me, I will cause you to mount up with wings of eagle and soar above any storm or problem in your life. And what I see about fire walkers is that there are people of faith that are not willing to compromise and that in the midst of the face of the greatest challenge of their life which would cost their life they said I will hit it head on what we've gotten good at are you listening church what we've gotten good at is making excuses amen but he's a good kid well I know he is but if he don't know Jesus he's going to die and go to hell and that don't sound real good but it's the truth and the truth shall set you free And as long as you enable them, they will continue to walk that out. As long as you continue to excuse it or turn the blind eye to it, I've told you time and time again, you have a voice. God has given you a voice. It is the voice of victory. You don't have to settle for less. You don't have to settle for half. You don't have to settle for the world's ways. You can say in God's name, I'm a victorious child of the Most High God. And even in the face of the furnace seven times hotter, I will walk right in the midst of it. I will not excuse me. I'm tired of folk y'all all right yay some of you it's the first time you're visiting going oh my god what did I get into we've locked the door so you can't get out <laughs> just kidding just kidding <laughs> excuses 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 we keep putting it off and putting it off and delaying it and putting it off and if you turn the radio up louder to where you don't hear that little nod before long it'll shut down you understand me And most of you are flirting with burnout. Most of you are flirting with fatigue, disgust, and delusion. 
You've bought into what you thought was something that was real, but in the end there is, you begin to understand that people are still people and they still stank after a while. You've got to understand that it is not based on a denomination or a church or a style or a suit, but on the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And even in the face of the King Nebuchadnezzar's of this world and of that day, I must be a man of God and stand up and own my mistakes. Own it. Don't blame my daddy because he didn't put enough milk in my cornflakes or my mama didn't pack peanut butter sandwiches and she packed bologna. It's nobody's fault. It's mine. I know that we live in a difficult time. I know that the fire is hot, but in the midst of it, I will hit it head on. And he said to King Nebuchadnezzar, I don't have to defend. Matter of fact, if God wants to, he can deliver me, us from the fire. But even if he don't, and you throw us in the fire, even in the fire, I know our God is still victorious. And that's a good place for you to say amen. amen. Even in the greatest crises of your life, you need to understand and confront the challenge head on. You cannot continue to deny it. You can no longer be quiet about it. This community is in desperate need. Our schools are in desperate need of some on fire, sold out, Holy Ghost filled boys and girls, men and women of God that are not caught up in this baloney that we call church nowadays, this competition. Listen, there is no competition. My God is over it all and he's victorious over it all. And you need to walk in that vein, amen? Give him praise and glory in the house this morning. I sound a little like John Hagee right there. That old boy get a priest. They give him praise and glory in the house. I'm in my living room. Play Jesus. <laughs> Nuts. Our world is in desperate need. I had a shadow this week. Young man was, or you saw a picture on Facebook. We, we, uh, we worked around. I don't think that he thought, Sabrina, that the preacher picks up trash around the church and Make sure the bathrooms is, you know, we, we worked. <laughs> and uh, we, go to, uh, we go to lunch. I take him, I ask him, Wh- whatever you want. I'm glad he chose this place. It's pretty cheap. Mickey D's. Just <laughs> being honest. Because I did say whatever you want. I'm like, that boy wants to go down to Pixies. I'm, I'm in trouble here. <laughs> all right. I'm a preacher and I married a school teacher. That's just how it rolls, all right. But anyway, and so he, he, he wants to go to Mickey D's. Long story short, we get in line and I tell him whatever he wants. And uh, just on a dollar, no, I told him whatever he wants. <laughs> I just make sure you're listening. I told him, whatever you want, son. And there was this older gentleman behind us and uh, uh, hard of hearing and, and uh, looked to be about 100. And I'm not making fun of him. He's, he actually, after we entered the conversation, he's about 88 years old. And uh, he, he, he said, he, made, he started the conversation by saying, man, we should have come a little earlier because it was, you know, Mickey D's was crazy. Kids out of school shadowing people. It was, just, it was nuts up in there. And so I, I, uh, we entered into this conversation, and it got time to, to place the order and pay. I, I, I was trying to set an example because it's be, it, the Bible teaches us, you know, it's better to give than to receive. And so I, I said, I told the lady behind the, the uh, register, I said, listen, I, whatever he wants to, this, this older gentleman. So the young man's watching, he's paying attention, and I'm trying to teach him a lesson. I'm going to actually teach him audibly when we sit down later. Anyway, it messed that old timer up. I just messed him up. He said, let me pay for you guys. I said, no, 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 it's our treat, it's our treat. And I, I want you to understand that I say that because here's an 88-year-old man that began to talk about the end times, began to talk about how the, 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 the end is near and how that we, we don't see this kind of love anymore and how we need to love one another. I mean, I just bought the God cheeseburger at Mickey D's. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't go eat that meat. I'm just saying we love Mickey D's if anybody works there. <laughs> I would <laughs> I wouldn't go, but I bought it for him. You know, and what, what I'm saying to you is this. In the simplistic and the most innocent things that we do, if we understand that we confront the challenge, I, the world tells us to be silent. The world makes these laws and it, it says, listen, you've got to bow down and worship this way. We've done it in our churches across the land that if the worship don't look like this or if it doesn't have this or if, it, if it's got too much of this or if, if the preacher gets a little long or if he, it, it, we get real long around him. If, 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 I can't raise my hands. I feel if I don't wear this, you, you following what I'm saying? And the kids got to have a name brand. I, I get so tired of my seven-year-old talking about name brand stuff. I mean, I, I want you to have quality stuff. But listen, there's more to it. I used to wear shoes from the pick and pay. Y'all remember the pick and pay? My cougars rock, baby. That's just how I roll. Y'all right? 
My daddy worked at West Point Stevens in the Slasher Room. My mama worked at Sangamo, known as Itron now. Listen, I never knew we were poor. I had no idea, and I didn't know till I got into middle school and high school. It wasn't middle school back then. It was gentle ed. I didn't know until I got over to, to junior high that cougars were skips. I had no idea. I said, what you talking about? I skipped the day Lucy. I don't know. We got to understand that there's more to it than that. Are you, you getting what I'm saying? They understood there's more to it. Hey, yeah, that's a nice gold image. King Nebuchadnezzar, you, you study looking dude. Yeah, I like it. I, I like to get in on some of that power, but I got something greater than that. And then we're willing to not compromise. I'm telling you, if God's telling you to move, I'm here to remind you this morning, move. If he's saying, hey, it's over, then you need to get on. If he's saying you need to continue, then you need to press in. I'm telling you, God speaks to those that he, he has that cries his name. It tells us if we'll just speak out, that he will answer us. If we need healing, he will heal us. And he is the God that is not slow to save and to help. He is the one that is long-suffering and turns an ear to us. I want you to understand you need to confront that challenge head on. I don't know what it is in your life. I don't know if it's disease. I don't know if it's depression. I don't know if it's been death and you're still mourning. I'm telling you this morning, though, you need to hit it head on. You need to declare, thus saith the Lord. I'm declaring victory over it. I will not walk in this anymore. And even in the midst of the fire, I will praise my most high God because I know him where my help comes from. I look up and over the hill and see him. I'm telling you this morning, these kids show us how to be fire walkers, people of faith. We confront the challenge head on. Secondly, fire walkers confound the enemy. They confound the enemy. Nebuchadnezzar is blown away. He says his attitude changes. He gets ticked off. And I want you to understand that, that, that this morning, if he wanted to torture those kids, what should he have done? He really should have turned the fire down so that they would be in there longer. And I'll leave it at that. I'm not trying to be graphic this morning. I want you to understand and follow a principle I'm teaching you. By faith this morning, you will confound those that throw stones at you, those that criticize, those that say that you never can and never will, those that say that you couldn't and you'll never rise above it. I'm telling you this morning that if you'll press in and hit that challenge head on and walk in the midst of the fire with God Almighty, that you will begin to astonish those people around you, the naysayers, the ones that said it couldn't be done. I told you last week, they said you could not transform this place in three days I watched at least a hundred come together and paint that wing down there build all these things around here and just absolutely blow things away largest crowd that we've had to date I, 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 not that numbers are, 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 are count to us but it's God doing the impossible and it confounds the enemy they said you ought not be preaching Joel and you still keep showing up you ought to stop I'm telling you keep showing up that is confounding them it's, it is absolutely astonishing to them and so Meshach said Shadrach and Abednego, in the face of the greatest challenge of their life, by faith, stood up to King Nebuchadnezzar and everybody around. In the face of great adversity, they began to challenge them. Now listen to me, listen to me. The way they did that, old Nebuchadnezzar got flustered. His anger got the best of him. He turned it up seven times hotter. He's frustrated. God wanted me to remind you like he reminded me that your enemy, and listen, you have an enemy. You know that? You're not fighting something on this side. You can't go to the gym and get buff enough to take on this challenge. It's something that you've got to confront with the fire, the Holy Ghost of God, the Word of God, the power of God. And your enemy is all about messing you up. He's all about sidetracking you, discouraging you, and defeating you, and devouring you, as the Bible writes. Peter said, he is a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. He comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. You have an enemy, just like Nebuchadnezzar, just like in the world. You have an enemy. And so when you begin, watch this, when you begin to respond with goodness to your enemy, you mess them up. Anybody ever been there? I, I mean, I, now listen, listen. Now, now, I struggle with this. Joan, I struggle with this. I sometimes... I, I let my mouth overload, you know what I'm saying, and, and, and so I get in trouble. I, I, I speak sometimes before I should. I know none of you do that because you're super spiritual and you got it all. I know that you don't do that, but I do that. I speak sometimes. Sometimes I'll get into a discussion. I'm thinking, how'd they ever get here? Just shut up. Did you ever do that? I mean, but, I, but, but the more God begins to teach me, the, the more God grows me, even in the pastoral sense, the more I begin to understand that if I render good for evil, 
If I don't grow weary in well-doing, and even those that, that persecute me, I look at them and say, I love you, or I keep silent, it messes them up. What's funny is it seems to make them matter. It's like God says in the midst of this, know that, hey, I got you, and if you'll let me control you, if you'll be a firewalker, which is a person that walks by faith and not by sight, if you'll understand that I'm in control, that I'm orchestrating, he don't even realize that seven is a number of perfection, and I'm already ahead of you boys. If you'll just keep your mouth closed, and they said we don't even need to defend our God. I think we spend way too much time arguing. Is that okay? I do. Listen, I... I I'm not talking about just among you. I'm talking about even in the pastoral realm, the church realm. We spend way too much time fighting with one another. We spend way too much time, and Satan loves it. He's having a heyday. And the whole reason we named it one is because we want everybody to understand we are one. We understand the principle that Jesus taught that Paul wrote about in Galatians where there is no Greek, no Jew, no barbarian, no slave, no free, male or female. We're one in Christ Jesus. And we live in that vein and we walk it out amongst the people. And it seems like the ones that want to hurl and hurt us, it mesmerizes them that we can look at them and we can say, thank you. Now, I don't always get that one right. (laughs) But I have been blown away. I have been blown away that in the midst of the fire, and they're going to throw fire at you. If they hadn't already, they will. Matter of fact, are you listening to me? I'm telling you the gospel truth here. The Bible says, let your yes be yes, you know, but you will be criticized even becoming to church here. Do you know that? And I'm okay with that. My job is to equip you. They'll say, what you doing going over there? I heard, a pa- I heard other people say this week that, listen, you belong here and you belong there. Hey, you belong where God tells you. You understand me? Not this preacher or anybody else. Okay, amen. Give him glory and praise. I've had enough of the fussing. You? I've had enough of the fighting. Do you say to y'all, is everything perfect here at one? <laughs> You kidding me? I'm be preaching. I, I, I mean, you know, I'm so sorry. My, oh, she's looking at me down. The school teacher going be no. I, I, I'm a mess. I'm a mess. I'm short with people. I'm I'm distant at time. I I, I got all of those symptoms. I have the propensity to do anything and the most ungodly at any given season. I just want to trust God that He's going to walk it out and change my life day by day. And I'm tired of the fussing. I'm tired of the denominational war. I'm tired of the church style war. I'm tired, and I'm tired of preachers even talking about it. I'm tired of folks saying, if you're not there every time the door is open, you don't love God. That's a lie out of hell. I've had to work overtime. I understand it. My little girl gets sick. I understand it. I, I got you. I want, to, I want to be known as a people that says, listen, we love the Lord. We love the Lord, and the Lord loves this community. And until he sends us, wherever he sends us, we're going to change this community, and we're going to radically shift it, and we're going to confound our enemies. They're still talking. They're still guessing. They're saying, hey, how's it going? What's going on over there? Now they're beginning to ask us, what y'all doing over there? They're beginning to say, hey, can we hold a conference here? And the people getting invited to the conference, watch this, this is the gospel truth, are the very ones that said, I couldn't preach anymore. Y'all all right? That's the truth under God. I didn't have to say anything. You with me? And if it's in my life, I know it's in your life. And you need to understand that if you'll walk this out by faith, and even if it seems ridiculous or crazy or sideways, and even if it seems a little hokey pokey, that if I trust God, if he sends me in the fire, then he'll give me the ability to confuse everyone around me. And they'll be like, what's going on? Man, I want some of that. You see, God's already working. God's already shifting. And if you will walk by faith, if you will be a fire walker, if you will prove to the world, you don't have to prove anything to God, you don't have to defend anything, but if you will walk by faith, And be obedient even in the most difficult situation. You will confound your enemy. They will wonder what in the world is going on. They will get frustrated. And eventually they will become fatigued and they will begin to ask, what is so different? How come you say thank you? How come you smile? How come even in the face of great difficulty, can you smile? We watched again last night Soul Surfer. You guys seen the movie? Uh, the surfer gets her arm taken off by a shark, and it's just, cr- it's just crazy how God works. And, and I, I was sitting in there watching that movie with my girls, and I, I, I get, you know, it's okay for men to cry. You know that's all right? It's, it's okay for men to cry. I get a little, a little clump, a little emotional over that bad boy, you know. 
But I was getting jacked up because there's a scene in that movie. And, you know, uh, she has this kind of enemy surfer, little dark-headed girls always, you know, cutting in the way before her and always talking smack to her. And, 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 and so she comes back on the scene, and, and, and I love this part in the movie. You go, go home and watch it later. Don't pull it up on your phones now. She says to that girl, she, she, says, she says something smart to her, and, and she says to her, she says, thank you. She says, thank you for never, ever taking it easy on me. I love it, because they didn't know on the movie when they was making it, but, I, but Joel Henry was going to be preaching this point right here on this Sunday morning to this bunch of knotheads, and then it would fire me up because this is exactly what these kids did before King Nebuchadnezzar and all of Babylon. They, they confound them. They, 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 they would say, thank you. Thank you, because my God, even in the midst of this fire, is going to flex his arm. He's going to show who the one true God is. I'm going to walk by faith, and everybody around me is going to know that my God is Jehovah Jireh. My God is Jehovah Rafi. My God is Jehovah Nisti. He is the God that will always be there, even in the midst of that. And so we say thank you, because we love the challenge. And I love watching people around go, now, what's going on over there? That's our God. It's because we have chosen to walk by faith. We will not be distracted or discouraged. For death doesn't even hold anything on the Most High, for He has conquered it all. Let me give you the, I, I said those two to get to this one. I got like 10 sub points on this one. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Firewalkers, y'all all right, say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Down the glory. Down the, I'll, I'll keep preaching. Firewalkers, folks that are ignited, that are on fire for God, that walk by faith like these three Hebrew men, they not only confront the challenge and confound the enemy but they confirm the promises of God if they walk by faith I want to give you at least four or five things I believe that you need to take note on this morning that will absolutely stir your grits I mean it'll excite you some of you are in the crucible of life right now you would have thought two months ago six months ago a year ago you would have thought I'd never be at this place right now some of you can say that physically you said I didn't think I'd ever be in this house I didn't think, I passed by this place a million times, probably going on my way, doing my things, and I never would have thought that they had knocked down Mount Calvary out there. And, and <laughs> I ne- Somebody asked me this week, said, can we buy those crosses? I said, you can have them, man, whatever. Listen, you never would have thought it, but in the midst of it, God is setting up, and, and you confirming the, pros- the promises of God. When they were thrown into the fire, this is when, are you listening to me, this is when they really experienced the presence of God. Did you know that? You see, you and I, because we're made of flesh, we want to avoid the fire. We want to avoid, we want to avoid the confrontation. I'm a non-confrontational kind of guy. I am. Most of the time, man, I, I, listen, I, I, I'm the world's worst at sweeping stuff under the rug. Let's just don't need it. Out of sight, out of mind. God is changing me. You can't do that. You've got to hit it head on. You've got to stand and declare, thus saith the Lord. And you need to understand that I've learned, and, and God is teaching us again this morning, that even in the midst of the fire, being thrown into a fiery furnace, that they experience the presence of God. You see, we want to avoid the fire. I'm challenging you this morning to go ahead and get on fire so that when the heat's turned up, you're already stoked up for it anyway. You're already ready, and you begin to understand in those moments that you experience the presence of God greater than any other time in your life. I bet you if we polled this group this morning, that if we ask you believers, if you look back over your life, the times that you knew God was the realest and the most powerful in your life was some of the most hellish times of your life. I want us to get to a place where we say we don't care day in and day out. Put me in the fire. I want to experience the presence of God because Nebuchadnezzar stood up and said, hey, didn't we throw three in there? I see four, and the fourth one looks like the son of the God. I'm telling you right now, they, they experienced the presence of God in the midst. Stop avoiding the fire. Is that AI? Stop avoiding the fire. They experienced, they realized the presence of God greater than any other time. According to the text, not only did they experience the presence of God greater than any other time in the fire, but also they confirmed the promise that God said, I never leave you nor forsake you, but, but he said, the truth shall set you free. And they were not willing to compromise the truth. And so they were thrown into the fire, to the furnace, to the crucible. And in the midst of that, Jesus shows up and walks. I don't, listen, I can't even get over this. They strolling around in the fire. What up, yo? What are we going to do later? What are we going to go eat? You know what I'm saying? What's up? I mean, they just walk, they're strolling around in there. They didn't squirm. Some of you need to be still and know that he's God. 
You need to be quiet and understand he's in control and he's working all things to our good and in our favor to promote us and to bless us and to prosper us and to change people around us. And in the midst of that fire, they experienced the presence of God, but it says that they were loosed in that fire. You see, we avoid the fire when all actuality is if we'll jump right in, if we'll say by faith no matter what, I'm going to walk it out, we'll begin to understand that in the fire there's freedom, baby. <laughs> Let them say what they want. Let them do what they want because I know my God's got me free in this. You can't touch me. You can't touch me. You won't change my praise. You won't calm me down or quiet me down no longer. I will not be satisfied by the status quo. I'm willing to rise above even in the midst of the hardest time of my life. I've been set free. Glory to God. And it says they were loosed in the fire. Some of you are in the fire right now and you're squirming. And you're avoiding, and you're sidestepping, and you're excusing, and you keep hanging on to the past. You keep hanging on to dad and grandpa and grandmama, and I'm not saying they were bad. I'm not saying, I listen, I'll, I'll never understand how come folks will ride something plumb into the ground. If the ship is sinking, get off the ship. Sometimes you got to be like Jonah. You just got to get out the boat. Sometimes you got to be like Peter and step out on faith. Sometimes, even in the midst of the greatest challenge of your life, you will begin to experience, if you will let go and let God, if you will lose yourself in the Holy Ghost, you'll begin to understand, even in the midst of adversity, I am free. There is a peace that passes all understanding. There is a calmness that I can't even explain. Oh, I know it's hell all around me. I know it's hotter than it's ever been. I know they're judging me and criticizing me. I know they're talking about me and my family. But in the midst of it, I'm free. I'm freer than I've ever been. I can't understand. It. That's God Almighty. That's firewalkers. That's folks that walk by faith. That even in the fire, they're free. They experienced the presence of God greater than any other time. They were set free. Let me give you three more. The promises that they confirm. They led one of the greatest revivals of history. It literally says that as they walked through that fire and experienced and exposed the presence of God and shouted the victory in the midst of that fire that old Nebuchadnezzar stood up, looked in, made his declaration, went down by the fire, called them out, literally changed his stance. He literally made a decree for all of the land that you'd worship nobody but the God of Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, and revival broke out. Did you know, even in the midst of your hell right now, if you'll just sit back in the pocket of freedom where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Even in the midst of all the adversity that you're going through, if you'll begin to experience the presence of God and praise God because He'll loose you in the midst of it, you might revive your family you might revive your school you might revive your community hey you might even get this place set on fire where it continues to grow hey in the midst of it amen <laughs> quit avoiding the fire avoiding the fire is compromise sidestepping is compromise half stepping is compromising delayed step is compromising you've known for a while you should be here now, I'm not just talking about one community. You've known for a while that God was moving you. You've known for a while that God was stirring in your family. I like what one wife told me this past week. Her whole family is getting revived and on fire for God. She said she went home and she told everybody, gather the kids up. No, said, I will not settle any longer. We all going to be sold out around here. Now, that's not verbatim, but I'm not here to embarrass anybody either. That's a firewalker. That's a person that says by faith, I know we may not have enough. I know in the world's eyes it may look like we're going backwards. But see, as we back up, as we get in the fire and we get free in there, people are watching and they begin to experience revival. They may be confounded at first. They may be a little mesmerized at first. But we can just get them in here and get them around you. It begins to change them. Fire changes everything. And those kids, man, they were on fire. But when they got in the fire... Holy smoke. They led revival, the whole region. He made a decree. Wouldn't it be nice if your whole home had revival? Amen. Bless God. That's, hey, that's shouting grounds right there. Now I got my baby brother in here morning. I got some cousins in here. I got an aunt in here this morning. You don't think God ain't working in my family? Shabba ba on you. Hey, he's working. I'm not preaching anything I'm not trying to live. 
I'm looking at whole units that are being radical. You know what's been wild? Is I got some folks that, listen, they in Vegas. I've never been there. But I hear it's a lot of fun. I'm just saying. They got good, good food out there. That's what I heard. I got, I got folks. We got folks that are down in Miami. Man, I've been to Miami. Cuba. See? Yeah. Do you know what's crazy? Do you know what's crazy? Them rascals. Man, they texting me. They're inboxing me. They're writing on Facebook. Man, we wish we were there. Are you kidding me? It's the most nutty thing I've ever heard. I got people all over that wish they could be here today. I'm telling you why. Because in the midst of the greatest challenge of their life, they've tapped into the presence and the power of God, and they've experienced revival. They've been set back on fire. There's been a light that's been ignited in them, and they want to continue to burn. And so you have to stay in the presence of those that are on fire around you. Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego experienced revival in the whole region. Your whole home can be revived. Your whole community. I'm crazy enough to believe it. I'm crazy enough to show up every Sunday and Tuesday night church at one. I'm crazy enough to lead our people. I'm crazy enough to believe by faith that even if it takes a while, even if it takes a season of discouragement, even if it takes a season of difficulty, that my God is the delivering God and will rain down fire from heaven and revive all those around us. This community has no idea what's hit them. They have no idea because, see, most people are going through the motion and they're doing church just like they've always done it. Check in, check out, check in, check out. Get mine, get that, get this. I'm telling you, I'm here to mess you up in God. I'm here to take your mess in the gospel of Jesus Christ and make it a message. I'm here to declare that there is freedom in this place. I'm here to say, even in the hottest season of your life, my God is in control. Boston Mike. You can even roll up on here and be like, what in the world? That's my God. That's how he works. That's how he operates. And in their presence, he used them to spark revival. Let me give you two more things they confirmed. My God says, he tells us that he knew us before we was a twinkle in our daddy's eye. He he tells us in the scripture that if you believe every word of the Bible that he has already laid out the plans for you. There are plans to prosper you, to bless you, to grow you, to multiply, to show favor on you. And here we find three boys that absolutely face the greatest crises of their life. They become firewalkers and say, by faith, I don't care if you throw us in the fire or not, my God's going to show out. And here we find them Seeing great revival take place, but what's cool about it is Nebuchadnezzar pulls them out. They didn't need dust at all for anything because they, 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 they were fresh. So they didn't smell like smoke. And it says that King Nebuchadnezzar promotes them to the whole province of Babylon. So you say, are you a name it, claim it preacher? Well, I must be because I believe by faith that even in the midst of the greatest hell of your life, in the midst of the greatest fire and difficulty and decision, the greatest droughts or the greatest death or the greatest difficulty, that my God, if we will walk by faith and become fire walkers, that on the other side of it, like Job, I will get back more than I ever thought I lost. You see, because the things of this world grow strangely dim when you turn your eyes on God. And he said when he brought them out, he promoted them. Did you know you're just around the corner from your promotion? You say, oh, Lord, he done gone hokey pokey. No, I'm just preaching the word. If you're, in the, if you're in the crucible now, if you're in the pressure now, you are one decision. You are one step away from the greatest promotion of your life. He sets you up. You see, because in the fire, he says he removes all iniquity and impurities in your life. He burns out and pulls the dross out. He's getting rid of those things. And if you don't need it, he's going to remove it. And if you don't have it yet, he's going to bring it to you. And if you thought you could never, he says, listen, I'm going to make you ruler over the providence. I'm going to prosper you so that I get the glory. And so they begin to experience the presence of God. They, they walked in the fire. They were set free in the fire. They led revival. They were promoted. And I'm, I'm going to give you this last, and I'll cut it off there because it's just the way it works. Stop avoiding the fire. Become a firewalker. Because what happened to these kids is that in the midst of the fire, 
they walked into their destiny. You see, the thing that you're avoiding, the thing that keeps pulling you back, the thing that keeps nagging at you, you just need to speak death in the name of Jesus and speak life anew in the name of Jesus. That very thing that seems to continue to hurt you or harm you or held accusations at you, you need to embrace in the name of Jesus and say, hey, thank you. It only makes me stronger because as we walk in the fire, we begin to, did y'all like how that, fire, that's how we say it, fire. As you begin, I'm just making sure you're listening. Because as you begin to walk in the fire, you begin to walk out your destiny. You see, we bought into the idea that my God wants me to tiptoe through the tulips. That if I'm doing what God wants me to do, then everything's going to be gravy and cakewalk. You all right? That's the health and wealth, boys. You see, they leave the part out that understands the Bible to say that in the midst of the fire, seven times harder than it's ever been, that they walked into their destiny, that they led the revival of the whole region, that they assumed promotion, that God blessed them. And it wasn't in the tulips, bless God. It was in the fire. It was in the adversity. It was in the struggle. It was in the difficulties. And when you don't sidestep them and you walk into them, you begin to walk into your destiny. You see, I wanted to quit. You listening? I wanted to quit. I said, hey, listen, and some of you are here, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I said I'd never, ever do it again. If they can be that ugly, I'll be that ugly back. I don't ever want to do it again. Don't you, hey, don't you use two words. Don't you say always and never because God will laugh at you. And yet I'm telling you under God's anointing, under God's promotion, I begin to pick myself up with those people around me. We begin to walk forward. And here we are this Sunday morning in February. We're not looking back. We're beginning to walk into our destiny. We are on the verge of greatness, not for our namesake, not for one's namesake, but for God Almighty's namesake. Everywhere I turn around, somebody's saying, what's going on over there? It's because in the midst of the greatest fire of tragedy and difficulty, and death there was a handful of us that said by faith I'm going to walk this thing out I'm not going to listen I'm not going to look I'm just going to keep my eyes fixed on the prize which is God Almighty and he continues to wreck your world don't sidestep the fire if you avoid it you're probably avoiding your destiny there are no shortcuts in the kingdom of God there are no fast passes in the kingdom of God. There is but one way, and the Bible says it's a narrow way. Did you read my commentary last week? Pastor G taught my daughter that there are two ways. There's a skinny way and a fat way. And the skinny way leads to heaven and the fat way leads to hell. That's what my daughter said she learned. And I say amen to that. Because what she got was, is listen, it's a narrow way. It's the way of no compromise. It's the way that gets difficulty. It's the way that gets difficult, excuse me. It's the way that sometimes leads to drought. It's the way that sometimes leads to great adversity and stress. It's the way that don't make sense in the world's eyes. But you can go the easy way. You can go the world's way. You can check in and check out. But I'm asking you today, instead of being comfortable, instead of just being comfortable, I'm asking you to hit it head on and in the Holy Ghost and God Almighty's power, make a decision today. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We won't look back. We won't be sidetracked. I'm going to walk into my destiny. I'm going to assume my victory in Jesus. I don't care what the world has labeled me. I don't care how difficult it has been. Today is my day. There's some of you here today, you had no idea what you was getting into. You thought you was coming to church as normal. I'm not trying to be cheesy or funny or melodramatic or over the top. I'm just being real with you. God had a reason for you to be here. This, You know, it's been the coolest thing. I listened to stories last week that people said they were just driving by and they turned in here. You know what I mean? You think it's hokey pokey? You better start asking around. We've got people here this morning that have been on board. I said, how did you hear about one? We were just driving by when we was at the warehouse. Isn't that right? Amen. There are people that were on their way to another destination and said, hey, wait a minute, I know that little warehouse at church. Let me stop in here. There were some that saw these nuts, Casey Patterson, Wesley, and other ones, standing out by the road flagging them in. They thought they was going to get free food and come on at the bread of life. God doesn't make any mistakes. 
See, you think it caught him by surprise. You think he doesn't understand your situation. You think he does not relate. He said, in all ways I was tempted, yet without sin. You think he doesn't know the hold of those drugs that have on you. You think he doesn't know the hold that the pornography has on you. You don't think he knows that that flirting at work has you mesmerized and thinking you're you young again. Dude, you not, and you don't look that good. <laughs> and the grass is not greener on the other side. It's over the septic tank, and we all know what's in the septic tank. You understand me? Today is the day of deliverance. And for some of you, you've had it hid a long time. You've had the discouragement. You've had the depression. You've had it hid. You've smiled when we went to church. I'm good, preacher. I'm happy and I'm healthy and I'm holy and you're a liar. I'm asking you, don't, you don't need me. You don't need a priest or a pope or the country preacher, even though the pope resigned. Don't be alarmed because Jesus is still on his throne. Amen? Is that all right? Well, that's all right. That's how it is. You don't need. The Bible says there's but one mediator. It is the Son of God. We know him as Christ Jesus, the Messiah. It says that there is no other way, that there is no other name than that of Jesus Christ. And so this is your day where you come clean. This is your day where you lay it all down at the cross and you leave here brand new. Oh, you may still be in the fire But you leave here today praising God because you know in the fire you're going to walk your destiny out. You know that promotion's just over the other side. You know if I'll hold on as God holds on to me that I will get through the valley of the shadow of death and I will fear nothing because his rod and his staff, they comfort me. This is your day. And it was no mistake that you're here. No mistake. Will you stand to your feet, please? Band, will you come? Lights are going to go down in the house. Here's your turn. Here's your turn to go from a person that's just been saying amen to somebody that says, all right, now I want it. Here's the altar. We'll pray over you. We'll anoint you. We will ask healing in the name of Jesus. But you got to assume. You got to reach out and grab. You got to say this mine today. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Come on, through the place, through the place, through the place. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If you're here today and you've never said yes to Jesus Christ, the Bible says that you must confess Him as Lord and Savior. Repent of your sin, which is the things that you do that are contrary to Him. If you need Jesus today, if you are here and you were to leave and God forbid something happened to you, but you're not certain where you'd spend eternity, today is the day that you nail it down and that you get it with certainty, that you know that you know that you know that you're a child of the Most High God. And so I want to help you articulate that. If the Bible, the Bible tells us very clearly, confession must be made with a mouth. So you say something like this if you need Jesus. Jesus. That's it. There's no other access. Jesus, forgive me. You are my Lord and you are my Savior. I don't want to live like this anymore. I'm laying it all down. Heal me today in the name of Jesus. Jesus. If you prayed that prayer this morning in any way that you felt led to, I want to do something real quick. On the count of three, I want you to throw a hand up. One, two, three. Now. Hands all over the place. Put those hands down. Put those hands down. Put those hands all over the place. Well, the good thing is some of you shown up today and you had no plans to be baptized. The next step you need to make as a child of God is you need to come forward and be baptized. We got towels for you. It's all right. It's a nice day out there. You're not going to freeze. Matter of fact, you're liable to warm up a little bit. I want you to be obedient. I want you to confess him before men. The Bible says that. Don't be ashamed of him. Maybe you're here this morning. You say, listen, this is the church I want to partner with. We're not real big on tradition and all the hoopla that goes through it, but we do want you to publicly declare allegiance with God and the work that we're doing here in the kingdom. And so if you want to move and be a part of what's going on here, come on. Maybe there's a special need you have. Again, we'll be down here working the altar. My wife, Misty, there'll be leaders down here. They'll be praying over you. There'll be people down here with the oil. They'll be laying hands. Whatever your need is, we want you to come. I'm going to pray one more time, and they're going to lead the music, and you're going to move. Some of you need to move now. Father, we love you. We praise you for what you're going to do. We're excited about baptizing in the next 10, 15 minutes. We know that we plan to baptize these many, but you know exactly who's going to come forward no matter what. You're thick on their heart. You're heavy on them today. Today is the day. Today is the day. In Jesus' name, amen.
Won't you sing? Sing like you mean it too. Won't you come? Altars are open.